Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and we're picking right up in Pipeville. This is Lesson 7.2. So in our previous video, we learned that if the conductors are all of the same size and insulation type, we can just head straight to Annex C to answer all of our pipe fill questions. But when they're not, we're going to learn about what to do today. We're going to learn about Chapter 9, Table 4 and Chapter 9, Table 5. First, let's learn about Chapter 9, Table 4. It's on page 680 of the 2017. It's on page 696 of the 2020. And this video is 2023 compatible. So you find your page number for chapter nine, table four. If you've used the Mike Colt tabs that we recommend, you're going to have a chapter nine, table four tab, and you can flip there now. Let's get to it. When we get to chapter nine, table four, we're gonna find that all of these tables look almost identical. And the only distinction is the name of the type of conduit at the top of the table. You'll notice that the very first one is EMT, and then it goes down to a bunch of familiar friends and conduit, our RMC, Schedule 80, Schedule 40, and all of those different types. If you get our pro version to the program, we have a video called the strategic highlighting video that will show you how to strategically highlight these tables to make them pop. Starting on the left-hand side of this table, we're going to find our size of conduit. We want to make sure that we are in the inches column. We're not dealing with millimeters. Then we have a bunch of different columns across the top. The first one is more than two wires. The second one is 60%, and that's going to be for nipples. Our one wire is 53%, two wires, and then the diameter of the pipe, and then the 100% total fill area. Let's break them down one by one. The first one that we come down is when we have more than two wires. So anytime we have three or more wires, we're going to use this percentage. It's the 40% fill column. What it's saying is you're allowed to fill that conduit up to 40% of its capacity. And these values listed down below are going to let you know what that capacity is. So we would start here on the left hand side find our tray size conduit, and then we would come over to our respective column, and that lets us know the total square inch capacity of this pipe that we are allowed to fill. In box fill, we use cubic inches, but in pipe fill, we're going to use square inches. And the next column over would be our 60% for nipples. So when we're dealing with nipples that are 24 inches or less, we're going to use the 60% fill column. So the question will ask, if we have a nipple of this size, you know, how many conductors can you fit? First, you would come over to your size of conduit. Then if it was a nipple, you would come over here. You would grab that value, and that's how much space you have total to fill. Then the same thing here with one wire and two wires and the diameter and the area completely. Now you say, when would you ever have one wire? Well, a really good example is if you are doing a grounding electrode conductor. You might have one wire in a pipe. Also, this includes one cable. It'll be treated like one wire. So if you put one piece of Romex in there, you're actually going to use the 53% column here. And the same thing with two wires. It would be if you had only two wires and, or if you had two cables in the conduit. Or if you had three cables, like three pieces of Romex, you would use the 40%. Now, we won't hardly ever use the diameter, but if you're ever asked a specific question, what is the diameter of such and such conduit, this is where you find all your information for conduits, right here in the Chapter 9, Table 4 table. I will say this, I have had this final column on an exam before, the 100% area. It will ask you what the 100% area of a conduit is. All you have to do is remember to come to Chapter 9, Table 4, find your type of conduit, slide over here to the 100%, and you'll be able to look it up and find that one easy. Let's get to it. Now that we've learned all about Chapter 9, Table 4, and that it's all about conduit dimensions, now let's head to Chapter 9, Table 5, and let's learn about the conductor dimensions. Just like with Boxville, each conductor has a size that it is. It is a square inch size when you're dealing with Pipeville. And we're going to head over and find out how to find out that square inch value. Then we know all we have to do is divide, just like we did in Boxville. When we get to Chapter 9, Table 5, it looks very similar to Annex C, but anytime we come to a table, we have to be careful to make sure we're in the right table. We want to make sure that we're in Chapter 9, Table 5, not in Chapter 9, Table 5A. Just like with Annex C, there is an A version of the table that is for only compact conductors. So we're going to head here, and we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our type of insulation. Then we're going to cross over and find our wire size. 
then we have to be careful here. We want to make sure that we're in the approximate area and that we're in the inches squared. We're not dealing with diameter for pipe fill, although there may be a time that you have a question that asks you for the diameter of a conductor. If that's the case, you would head here and it'll tell you the answer. But we're dealing with area when we're dealing with pipe fill. So we start on the left-hand side, find our type of insulation, find our wire size, and then find our approximate area in inches squared. Now, let's do some practice questions. Before we jump into the practice questions, let's go ahead and hit the major points. We're going to use Annex C when all of the conductors are of the same size and insulation. With dealing with equipment grounding and bonding conductors, they shall be included based off the actual dimensions of the conductor. It's not like we did in Boxville. If there is a grounding conductor in that pipe, it counts one for one, and all of them count. If you've got 10 of them, they all count. Conduit 24 inches or less shall be calculated from the 60% fill column. A combination of conductors of different sizes shall use the actual dimensions from Table 5 or 5A if they're compact conductors, and then we're going to use the dimensions of the conduits listed in Chapter 9, Table 4. And it's a little bit different than when we're dealing with load calculations. We're actually going to round up when it's 0.8 or greater. And I have one of those examples in our questions coming up, so you'll be a pro by the end of this video. Let's get to it. How many more, number 12, THHN conductors can you install into a piece of 3 quarter inch EMT that already contains three number 10 THHN conductors? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the total area that we have to work with. And to do that, we're going to head to Chapter 9, Table 4, for EMT. And when we get there, the first thing we do is make sure that we're in the right type of conduit. Then we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our trade size, and we go down to 3 quarter. Then we're going to cross over to the more than two, because our question deals with more than two conductors. So we're going to pull from the 40% column. And that's going to let us know that our starting available area is 0.213 square inches. Now we need to find what we already have, which is the number 10s. We're going to head over to Chapter 9, Table 5. And when we get there, we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our type of insulation. We're going to cross over and we're going to find our size of wire. Then once we find that, we're going to cross over to the approximate area. And each individual number 10 is 0 0.0211 square inches. Now that we have our conduit and our starting conductor, let's go ahead and write down our number 12s. That's the conductor that we're wanting to install. And then we'll be done with the code book and all we have to do is some simple math. After we find that value and write it down, we can proceed. We're going to take and multiply our conductors that we already have. We have three number 10s multiplied by the value by a number 10, and that gives us this number. Now to figure out how much space we have left, all we have to do is take our total fill area, which was 0.213, subtract the number 10s, and then that lets us know we have 0.1497 remaining left to fill. In order to find out how many number 12s we can fit in it, all we have to do is divide. We take our available area left to fill, divided by the individual number 12, and we're going to find out that we can fit 11.255. In this case, it's lower than 0.8, so we're going to round down to 11 conductors, and we select D. Great job. How many 1-aught XHHW conductors can you install into a piece of 2.5-inch Schedule 40 that already contains four 4 aught XHHW conductors? So the first thing we're going to find out is find out the square inches of our pipe. For that, we're going to head to Chapter 9, Table 4, for Schedule 40. When we get there, we're first going to verify that we are in the right type of conduit. Then we're going to come over here to the left to find our size of conduit. Then we're going to come over to the 40% column because we have more than two conductors. And we're going to find that for this conduit, it's 1.878. Now we need to head to Chapter 9, Table 5 and find out the square inch values of our wires. When we get there, we make sure that we're in Chapter 9, Table 5 and not Chapter 9, Table 5A. Coming down the left-hand side for the type of insulation, then finding our wire size, then we come over here to the approximate area in square inches, and we find its value.
now that we have our conduit and our starting conductor, let's go ahead and write down what the conductor that we're wanting to install is. And it's 1 aught XHHW. Now we can start all over. We multiply by how many conductors that we already have. We have 4 multiplied by the value for a 4 aught, and that gives us this number. Then what we're going to do is take our total area that we were able to fill and minus what we have, and that lets us know what we have remaining left to fill. Then all we have to do is divide. We take our remaining left to fill, divide by our individual one aught, and that lets us know that we can fit 3.28 conductors. We are below 0.8, so we're going to round down, and we find that we can fit three more in the conduit. How many number 12 THHN conductors can you install into a 20 inch nipple of EMT that already contains three number 10 THHN conductors? First, we're going to find the square inches of our pipe. We found out previously that table one tells us for nipples that are 24 inches or less, we are going to use the 60% fill when using EMT. So how we find out what the 60% is, is we're he we'll head to chapter nine, table four. First, we will verify our type of conduit to make sure we're in the right conduit. Then we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our size of conduit. But then we need to cross over to the 60% fill because this is a nipple. And we find that it's 0 0.320. Now we can finish the problem like normal. We're going to head to chapter 9, table 5 and find out the square inch value of our conductors. When we get there, we verify we're in 5 and not 5A. Then we're going to come down and slide on the left-hand side, come over to our size wire. Then we're going to come over to the approximate area, and we're going to find that it is 0 0.0211. We found out our pipe. We found out our starting conductor. Let's go ahead and write down the conductor that we're wanting to add while we're right here in the table. Now, all we have to do is multiply. We take our original conductors, which was 3, multiplied by its value, and that gives us this value. Then all we have to do is subtract from our starting value. Our starting value is 0 0.320. Now all we have to do is minus what we already have, and that lets us know that we have this much remaining left to fill. Then, to find out how many more we can fit, we simply divide. We take our available left to fill, divided by the conductor that we're wanting to install, and that lets us know that we can fit 19.3. We're going to round down again, and we are going to select B. Great job. The next three sample questions are going to go a lot faster. It's assuming that you've already learned how to use these tables. I'm not going to be showing them on the screen. How many more 2 watt THHN conductors can you fit inside of a piece of 3 inch Schedule 80 PVC if it already contains 5 1 watt THHN conductors? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Chapter 9, Table 4 and find our pipe. Then we're going to find the appropriate column based off of our number conductors. And we're going to find that for 3 inch, here is the value. Then we're going to go find our type of insulation in Chapter 9, Table 5. Go ahead and get all of the values for conductors that are involved. First, we're going to take our known conductor, 1 aught, and we're going to take and multiply it by 5, and that's what we're already filling of this pipe. Then we're going to take and minus our total fill, minus what we already have, and that gives us our remaining left to fill. Then we take our 2 watt conductor and we divide it out, our remaining left to fill by the conductor that we're wanting to install, and we're going to find that we can fit 7.4. Again, we're going to round down because it's less than 0.8, and we're going to select B. How many more number 10 THW and dash 2 conductors can you fit inside of a piece of 3 quarter inch Schedule 80 PVC that already contains 3 number 12 THW and dash 2 conductors? We're going to head to Chapter 9, Table 4 and find our pipe. We're going to find the appropriate column based off the number of conductors, and we're going to find this value for a piece of three-quarter. Then we're going to head to Chapter 9, Table 5 for our conductor properties, being sure to write down all the values that we need. First, we're going to take our number 12 that we already have, multiply it by the 3 that we already have, and that gives us this value. Then we're going to take our total available to fill, minus what we already have, and that gives us this for our remaining left to fill. Then we just take that and divide. 
we divide that out and we find that we can fit 5.88 conductors and in this case it is 0.8 or larger and we will round up to 6. Great job. What is the total area in square inches of a piece of one inch flexible metal conduit? For this one, we're gonna head straight to chapter nine, table four. When we get there, we're gonna verify that we're in the right type of conduit. Then we're gonna start on the left-hand side and find our size of conduit. Then we have to cross all the way over to the 100% fill area. I have been tested on this in the past, so it's good to be familiar with using this table on all spectrums. And in this case, we're going to select 0.817. Great job. That's the end of lesson 7.2. Thank you for joining us. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And you can head over to electricalexamcoach.com and take our free version. Or when you're really ready to get your license or take your career to that next level, you can get our pro version, which will unlock all of the quizzes, practice tests, and all of the other pro features anytime, completely for free. You can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com if there's any way that I can help you in life or business. Let's get to it.